The Democratic Alliance says it has received confirmation from the South African Revenue Services that records of thousands of dollars stolen from President Cyril Ramaphosa's Palapala farm were non-existent or could not be found. For more on this, we're joined by the DA's leader, John Steenhuisen. John, thank you very much uh, for availing yourself this afternoon. Perhaps let's start with a bit of background as to when you requested this information from SARS and when you got a response today to say, well, the affidavit um, really cannot give you access to the recent uh, requested information because it's not there. Correct. So you may recall last year the president tried to put a respectful veneer uh, of accountability on the whole Palapala Pala matter by indicating it was a simple business transaction between him and a Sudanese businessman and that in fact the money had been legally brought into the country uh, and that certainly was alleged by Mr. Mustafa. So we submitted a promotion of access to information act request to SARS to request the record of this money being declared and the forms that would have had to be filled out when it entered the country and surprise, surprise, um, the record doesn't exist. Uh, and this clearly shows that the President's attempts to portray this as some legitimate business transaction uh, is nothing more than an addition to the tissue of lies that South Africans have been fed around the whole Palapala Pala matter, from um, the involvement of the Presidential Protection Unit to the cross-border raids, to the interactions from the Namibian government side to South Africa, um, to now the fact that this money was not legitimately in the country and that the money that the President had stuffed into a couch in his private home was in fact illegally in the country and therefore could never have constituted a legitimate business transaction. Mm -hmm. You actually go further to say you believe that this is part of corrupt, illicit or illicit rather, or illegal purposes. Correct. I mean, if, there's no, if there's a legitimate business transaction, why would you hide the fact that you're bringing in a substantial amount of dollars into the country against the law of the republic and against the exchange control and, uh, and then pretend that this was a legitimate business transaction? We have money that was bought in illegally, it bought buffalo ostensibly that have never been collected and the money was never banked. It was stuffed into a couch and clearly to avoid having to answer the questions about where this money came from. Uh, and so the president, what he, what he tried to do last year was to try and put a respectable veneer on this whole thing. It has completely collapsed under the weight of scrutiny and the truth is starting to emerge uh, by the day that the president's version of events is not a full and honest account about where this money came from and why it was in the country. The president is challenging that uh, report, right? And we saw the ANC also voting against it um, in Parliament. The Constitutional Court last week denying the president uh, access to it to challenge that report. We are yet to know his next move. It appears clear to you what he needs to do? Well, it appears clear to me exactly what he needs to do and what Parliament needs to do. The President needs to stop playing games with the people of South Africa and tell us a full and honest account about where that money came from, why he had it, why it wasn't banked, and why it was hidden in a couch at his house. I think we deserve the truth as the citizens. Secondly, Parliament needs to do its job now by initiating an ad hoc committee to examine the particular circumstances around the President's palapala uh, cashed in his couch and needs to be able to have the powers to summon the president as well as other witnesses so that we can get the truth on the table. I think South Africans are tired of the games that are being played, the house of cards that the president constructed, which are now being dismantled day by day, but also the forum shopping. Uh, the president's now jumped to the con court. They've said we're not prepared to hear you. He's going to obviously have to try and find another court to try and process um, his, his um, unhappiness with that report. Um, and this obviously places him in a very, very difficult position because he's starting to look increasingly like his predecessor, Jacob Zuma, who jumps around from court to court, forum to forum, desperately trying to prevent having to answer the tough questions. And we have got an ANC caucus in Parliament who are very clearly determined to repeat the same mistakes they made under the Zuma administration by protecting the president from answering the tough questions at all costs. So we have a problem in South Africa, and Parliament needs to step up now and make sure that it reintroduces some form of legitimacy and accountability uh, in our processes. And that's why we're putting more pressure on the Speaker as a result of this allegation and this revelation 
to get this ad hoc committee set up so that once and for all, South Africans, Parliament, the media and voters can understand exactly what happened there. So you've written to the Speaker. Have you gotten any response in terms of setting up this committee? Now, we have written to the Speaker last week already um, when the President's Concord application was struck down uh, and we're obviously waiting to hear from her. But we really hope that particularly given the stinging criticism of the Zondo Commission report on Parliament's failure to hold the executive accountable in those years of state capture, that she is aware of the gravity of the situation and how fundamentally it is impo important it is that Parliament does its job as the Constitution prescribes. The EFF, for instance, has asked the President to resign. He will be reshuffling his cabinet tonight in light of this recent information and this revelation by SARS. Do you believe that he should step aside while this process takes place? Well, I mean, he is the, pre he is the President of the Republic of South Africa, um, but I would say that the cabinet reshuffle is going to be like shuffling the deck chairs on the Titanic. The reality is the President is the discredited head of a discredited cabinet and frankly the whole lot of them should go uh, which is why we bought a motion of no confidence in the cabinet earlier this year they're comprehensively failing in every single aspect of South African life from fighting crime to creating jobs to growing the economy to the fact that we grey listed and ironically one of the reasons we were grey listed is precisely because there's very little control of unlawful illegal money coming into the country and here the president now finds himself at the heart of this problem that led to us being grey listed. So I, I think it doesn't really matter what, who gets shuffled and where. I think it's going to be very cosmetic, um, but it's really not going to move the needle in any significant way in addressing the issues that are plaguing South Africans on a daily basis. We need a new government in place. Otherwise, we're going to continue with the same compromised people around the same table, making the same bad decisions that got us into this terrible mess that we're in already. John Steenhuisen is the leader of the official opposition in South Africa, the Democratic Alliance. Thank you.